Huge thanks to our sponsors for making ResolveCon 24 possible. MotionVFX makes the best plugins for DaVinci Resolve. They have plugins to quickly add beautiful graphics to any kind of project you're working on, and they're compatible with both Mac and Windows. And right now you can get their mHello 3D for free. This is a pack of super useful 3D shapes that you can add to any video and take your visuals up a notch. Just click right here or the link in the description. And of course, ResolveCon would not be possible without Blackmagic Design. They just came out with the full release of DaVinci Resolve 19. For editing, color, effects, and audio, it's pretty much everything you need to make any kind of project in DaVinci Resolve. You can download DaVinci Resolve 19 right here or in the link in the description. This presenter is one of my favorite people that I have met in the last year. Um, Ali is is just a, a breath, breath of fresh air. She's she's wonderful, uh, such a good editor and uh, such a great personality. So let's let's just bring her in here, shall we? Hey, Ali, how's good it going? To you. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. I'm so I'm excited so for people to meet you and and be excited about the things you're excited about. Oh. And thanks for the nice intro introduction. That kind of made my day. Oh, it's all sweet. You just, it's true. It's all true. Promise. Yeah. Well, um, Ali, what are you going to be talking about today? I'm going to be talking about how to use text like a pro. Um, me and my partner, Will, who I have our Ali and Will YouTube channel with, also own a video production company in Toronto. And a lot of our clients, corporate, commercial, social media videos we make for them, they ask for text on screen periodically to just, oh. you know, make things more attention grabbing to get a message across. So there are lots of really cool things you can do. And I'm going to show everyone some of those things. I'm so excited. I think this is going to be so helpful for so many people because that's that's one of the most common things is like, put some text on screen. How do you do it in an interesting way? Well, yeah. uh, I'll let you go ahead and take it away and uh, everybody give it up for Allie. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, everyone. So um, I'm very happy to have you all here. It's an honor to be teaching you some text like a pro stuff. Hopefully you've uh, had a chance to download the assets. I included in the download link a few fonts. If you haven't downloaded them, that's okay. You can follow along. You can just choose your own font. So the first thing I want to show you guys is how to create, I'm going to call it a location tag for this specific um, example, but you could also use what you're going to learn as a lower third title, as a social media tag. You'll see what I mean. So we are in the edit page here. I have this talking head clip of me in a beautiful part of Canada where I'm from, um, British Columbia. And I'm just blabbing away here, but I'd like a little location tag that says British Columbia to show up on screen. So the first thing we are going to do is go up to effects and open effects up if it's not already open. With toolbox selected, we can go to our magnifying glass and search for text. It's under titles, basic text or basic title. Let's just drag that above our talking head clip and it shows up here on the V2 track. So you can select the text either on your timeline or you can select it right on the pro let's pick a better thumbnail of <laughs> there okay so you can select the text and you might be going hey how do i edit this well let's open up inspector on the top right here and here we go so we either under title rich text can change the text here or you can also double click on the text on screen and change it. So I'm on a Mac. I'm going to press, I'm going to be using Mac keyboard language and I'll attempt to translate that into Windows language as well. Um, I'm going to press Command A on a PC, Control A, I believe, and just type in Brit, if I can spell British Columbia. Okay. Now click off there for a sec. You can grab your text and move it around on screen and it will snap places. For now, let's move it to sort of the bottom right area of screen. We will be adjusting the exact position a bit later. I'm just gonna click on effects to close it and media pool so we have a bit more visual space to work with. Okay, over in the inspector where it says font family, you can click where it currently says for me open sans 
and you can start typing in the font that you want to use. The downloadable font I included is called DOSIS, D-O-S, oh, where is it? D-O-S, there it is. So it's been highlighted there. If it's highlighted, you can just press enter and now our text has changed to DOSIS. Under font face, let's click the drop down menu and choose bold. And I'm gonna increase the spaces in between each letter just a little bit, because I find things a bit too clumpy <laughs> uh, right now. So here where it says tracking, let's just move it to the right a bit. So it's 12. So we have a little bit more space between each of those letters. Also for sizing, let's increase the size slider. Oh. If you find that a bit finicky, you can also hover your cursor right over the number itself and adjust the size. I'm gonna stick with 110. That's a bit big now, but don't worry, we will make some adjustments later. And the next thing that we are going to do is, let's just scroll down in our inspector a little bit to where it says position X. Let's change the position X, which is across horizontally. Let's just change it to 1375, which again, you can do by just hovering your mouse over these numbers and dragging. The Y axis is up and down. So let's change the Y axis to, we'll bring it down just a little bit. 235 works for me. Okay, so far so good. Also the color of my font by default is white and we're gonna change it to black. Where it says color here, click on this box that is currently white. We have our color wheel up. You can just drag the slider all the way to the right. Now it's black. Okay, lovely. Next thing we are going to do is we are going to create a background for this text just to make it stand out a little bit more. I add backgrounds to a lot of the text I use, especially when I'm creating lower thirds titles, which I do all the time. Um, maybe you do as well. So again, in our inspector, we can just scroll down and you will see background. Currently it's showing that it's on, but you're not seeing anything likely. That's because we have to increase the height. Let's also, decrease the width here because that by default just a little too too much of that going on so we're going to adjust our width by decreasing the slider here let's bring it down to around point 50 point five five a little bit smaller than that point Five, three, four should be good for now. And I'm just gonna click off for a sec. Okay, so far, you know what? Let's first change the color of the background by again, clicking on this color box and dragging the slider all the way to the right, or sorry, left, uh, so it's white. Press okay. And you may notice that we have some extra space on the left and the right here. That's okay, because we're gonna do something about that in a bit. Just want to um, decrease the opacity or increase it rather, because I do like seeing some of the background show, but this is a little too much background. We can go down in the background tab still just a little bit and adjust the opacity slider here. I'm gonna increase it to 75. I'm happy with that. And you also may notice that the corners of this rectangle are rounded. I like rounded rectangles. I usually go with rounded. Um, you can adjust if you want hard corners, you have that option as well. You can adjust still under the background tab, the corner radius. If you increase it, it rounds things out a whole lot. And if you decrease it, 
you can go with full sharp rectangle or a little bit of a curve there. Okay, great. So far, so good. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is, I'm just going to lower the timeline a bit to give us a bit more room. We can open up our media pool that I closed earlier. And uh, this was one of the download assets, a map pin. Drag that above your text to create a V3 track. Select that map pin and it's ginormous right now. So we have to decrease the size in the inspector under transform where it says zoom. Let's zoom way down, way, way down two, 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 here we go, point zero 0.080, tiny, that's good. Now we are going to move this down under uh, or beside British Columbia, and then we will move the word British Columbia over just a bit. So let's drag the position, the Y axis, down, down, down. Just gonna close our media pool to give us a bit more room. and. Just composition wise, I'm looking to kind of have this location pin so that it's centered up with the B. So it's not going above or below the B. And then we are also going to move our X axis position here in transform over to the left a little bit. And things are kind of squished up right now. We don't want that. So, oh, click on our text on the V2 track, we're gonna just move British Columbia, the text itself over to the right a little bit. So again, under background, here where it says center X, we are going to adjust this. Let's move it over to the left a little bit. And as you will see, that moves the background itself somewhere around minus 48 works and then you want sort of the same space above and below the letters so things look a bit more even so you can adjust the y axis as well the y a little bit minus three should look good and we will just move our map pin over a bit more select that again on the timeline under transform position x let's just move it over a little bit more to the left so things look even. Okay, so, so far so good. We're almost done, but we have a few more things to touch up. Right now, this location tag is a little big, so that's no problem because what we can do, this is another thing that I use all the time, that is compound clips. That's what we're about to create. So a compound clip lets you combine multiple assets for easy use. We're going to combine this map pin with the text. So this lower third so uh, location tag can be adjusted as a whole. Let's select both the map pin and the text, not our footage. Right click, go up to new compound clip and click it. You can name it whatever you'd like. I'll call it location tag, press create. There it is. So now if we do something like adjust the zoom, which we can do, I'm going to just decrease the size of it to around 0.75. There we go. The whole thing is affected, which is great. If for any reason you need to access the letters, if you need to change things up or the pin, you can right click on your compound clip and you can go open in timeline and there both assets are. I'm actually gonna just change my timeline view to display stack timelines so I can easily see the original. Open media pool again, there we go. Okay, there's good stuff. Okay, one other thing I like to do, it's a bit maybe cheesy, but I use it. Uh, I find it really helpful. Above the program window on the right here, you have this little icon. This is title safe and I like to turn it on just to line up my social media tags and text and whatever. So click on the drop down menu, 
And under Safe Area Guides, click on Title. That's going to bring up these boxes. Title Safe just basically ensures that your titles don't get cut off if viewed on different screens if you are using it. So we also by default have the broadcast and film guidelines up. I'm going to click that to turn it off so we just see title safe. Click away. Cool. Okay, let's grab our location tag and move under transform our position X to just line up with the right side of the um, safe titles. Then our Y axis will bring down and line the bottom of it up there so it just sits nicely in the corner. Okay, now you can turn this title safe off by just clicking on the icon again. There it is, see you later. Last but not least, this uh, location tag just kind of, we don't want it to just be on screen and then at the end be gone. We want to add nice little animation and that's something that we can easily do because we already, already have one pre-made in effects by going to effects here under the search bar. Let's X out where it says text. Make sure we have toolbox selected. Type in push. There we go. Push is something I use a lot, so I have started because it's one of my favorites. Let's drag this onto our V2 track, onto the location tag right at the front here, and check out what the default looks like. Cool, so that's what it does by default. Obviously, we don't want it coming from the left and going all the way across screen from the right. I want it going from over here and coming onto screen. Let's select the push effect on our location tag. There we go. An inspector transition right here where it says preset. Click the drop down menu and choose push right. Let's check it out again. There we go. It comes out of the right side. And if you want to decrease the length of time it takes to show up, you can either click right on the push effect here and drag it inwards or longer if you want it longer. I'm going to drag it inwards a bit. Also notice in the inspector as I'm adjusting this, up here in duration, the duration is decreasing. And you can also just drag over this number to increase or decrease the duration it shows. I'll bring it down to 0.8. Let's check out how that's looking so far. Kind of maybe a little faster down to, let's give point six a try. Cool, there we go. I also like to add a little bit of motion blur. So I'm making sure it's still selected, which you can tell because it's in red. Where it says motion blur, you can increase this number. Check out how around 0.397 is looking. Motion blur just gives it more of like a realistic feel. Here we go. So see, it makes it a little bit blurry as it comes in. Cool, okay, we're gonna take a look at this as a whole on full screen in a sec. We also just wanna add an outro effect. So grab push again in your effects, drag it on to the end here and select the push effect. Instead of having it push back out, uh, let's choose push down and check out what that looks like. There you go, it goes down. Just to show you another option, you can add a little motion blur there as well by dragging motion blur up to, again, sort of point 0.3 something. Decrease the duration a bit by dragging here. Cool, I'll bring my cursor to the beginning of the, oh, also one more thing I wanna show you. If you want the duration of the location tag as a whole to be a little shorter, you can just drag, grab the end here and just drag it inwards and the effects aren't affected. So cursor at the beginning, I'll press P on my keyboard to make this full screen and let's check it out. Cool, there we go. 
pee again. Awesome. Okay, so that's how to make a lower third title, a location tag. Um, I wanted to show you this with the logo in, or the location pin, just to give you the idea that if you're making a location tag for a company, you could put your lo their logo on the left side. If you're making social media tags, you can put like an Instagram or a YouTube icon at the beginning here. Lots of cool stuff you can do. Next, let's take a look at creating a neon effect. This is a really cool look and it's something we're going to do in the Fusion page. Um, I was once upon a time afraid of the Fusion page. When I started working, I think a lot of people are at first, but when you start working in it, it's really not as scary as you might make up in your head. So we have this next clip here. This is the city of Toronto, where I'm from. We're going to kind of be, um, what's the right word? Looking at the CN Tower a little bit while we're creating this next text effect. And there are a few different ways you, you can work with fusion and fusion compositions. I'm going to show you for this particular technique, creating a, or using a, an adjustment clip. Let's again, in effects, X out where it says push and type in adjustment clip, drag it on to the V2 track above our clip. And one thing I like about working with adjustment clips is they you they let you you work in fusion and make your adjustments to the adjustment clip but they make it easy to see what's going on underneath so since we're going to be having our text layer show over this Toronto clip we'll be able to see the Toronto clip itself when we go into fusion one thing i like to do just cuz i'm clumsy and click things all the time is i'm going to lock the v1 track where my Toronto clip is so I don't accidentally mess with it and move it around. So with your cursor over your adjustment clip, I'm just going to move it over so it's at the beginning of the Toronto clip here. Let's go into Fusion. Here we go. Okay. I'm going to make this full screen because that's the way I like to live my life. So you can do that by clicking up here where it says Viewer. There we go. Okay, I'm also going to bring, these are the frames and duration of our video. So let's just bring our cursor by dragging it just to zero here. Good stuff. Okay, so to work with text, we can click on this T here. And there we go. We now have a text and a merge. Click on the text node and let's just drag it up. Just, I don't know, this is how I like to stay organized. So it's above our merge. We have it selected. With it selected, it's going to show our inspector and all sorts of cool options for working with text. Under the text box, click and let's type in all capitals because in this case, I find all capitals looks better. Let's type Toronto. And if you're from Toronto or you know anyone from Toronto, we don't pronounce the second T. We drop it. I don't know if we think we're cool or something or what, but we say Toronto, not Toronto. Anyway, so we will again change our font. If you have it downloaded, the doses font by clicking where it says font, click on the drop down menu. And if you start to type out doses, it will be highlighted and we can press enter. There we go. It has changed to doses. I have it set to bold, which I like the look of. Let's increase the size using the size slider to around 0.19. You can also click on your font or your text, click on the center of it here and move it around. Let's just, the top of the CN Tower is being cut off. We don't want that. Okay, so composition wise, let's try and just bring it so that it has about the same amount of space from the beginning of the T to where this ball part of the CN Tower starts, and then the same amount of space on the right side. And also let's try and just center it up so that this ball part of the CN Tower is sort of in the center. 
of Toronto. Something like that works. Okay. Next, something I think is really cool is when you click on color, we're going to change the color. So where it says color, click on the box. You can grab the eyedropper here and you can actually select a color right from your clip. So we're going to do that. Grab the eyedropper and hover over a part of the blue color in the CN Tower here. I find the darker part of the blue looks better for this neon glow text effect that we're going to be doing. So wherever that little tiny square in the center of our circle is, is the color we're going to pick. Click. Okay, there it is. If we wanted to adjust it a little bit, we could use this slider too, but I'm happy with that. So press OK. And that's good. We are now going to go over to the shading tab. We're currently working with where it says shading elements. We're currently working with element one. If you want to rename it, I like to just to stay organized. Let's just call it one. Easy peasy. Good stuff. And now we are going to create a second element. So click on the two here where it says select element. Let's name it two. Can't see anything yet. That's because we have to check mark enabled. There we go. Now we have lots of options. So first thing I want to do is make sure I'm happy with the thickness. You can change this after. But in uh, my testing, I found that 0 0.02 for thickness looks good. We also want to, just so you know, make sure that text for where it says appearance under the property tab, appearance, we want text outline selected. By default, the color red shows for me. So this is what the current situation looks like. The outline is red. I don't want red. I think that looks cheesy. I don't know. You decide what works for you. Um, I'm going to choose, again, the same blue in the CN Tower. I I think that works well for this effect. So following along where it says color, click on the color box, grab the eyedropper, and uh, I'm going to choose sort of a darker blue in the CN Tower here. Okay. Now, this doesn't look like anything special yet, but we are on our way to something special. So press OK here. Good stuff. Now, let's go down a little bit in the inspector to the softness tab. We're going to adjust the softness. And ultimately, of course, you can, I'll show you what these options do, but you can adjust them to your own liking. I'm going to show you the look I prefer. So for the X, let's increase the slider to around 12. You can see what that's doing here. It's kind of making the outline a bit blurry. This is going to um, accentuate, I guess would be the word, enhance the glow effect that we're going with. We can also adjust the Y. I like around 13, up to you, but 13 I think is uh, looking so far so good. Also, the main thing you wanna be doing here is adjusting the glow slider itself. So we will drag that to increase the glow to around, let's see here, point, 0.5, 0.52 is working for me. Now that's really glowy right now. It's okay. Keep it this glowy. I'll show you why coming up. If you do, however, just for your own knowledge, if you do find things a little too intense, if you've like really pushed your softness and you just want it to be a little less intense, you can adjust blend. Let's bring blend all the way to zero. That basically turns off the softness adjustments you've made. As you increase it as a whole, all those softness adjustments you made will be increased. Let's just, uh, ba -ba -ba. around 0.80, sure, cool. Okay, good stuff. So 
we are going to now right click. Let's just go up here to properties and we're going to right click where it says opacity, which brings up some options for us. Modify with allows us to do all sorts of cool things to this text. We're going to hover over and go down to shake and select it. Did you notice that when we selected shake, it opened up modifiers here before we couldn't access this tab? Now we can. Let's click on modifiers and we are going to adjust smoothness, which increases or decreases the duration between when the glow intensifies. Right now, I'll just show you bringing our cursor to the beginning. I'll press spacebar to play this through. So right now, here, let me click off text for a sec so we can see this. Right now, you can see the opacity is going up and down in our outline that we created the, the second element we created. Adjusting smoothness is going to change that. So let's select our text node again, make sure it's selected. Go back to modifier and adjust our smoothness. I like to have the smoothness around two point, let's try 2.5. And you can also mess with the minimum and maximum. Just let's show you, I'll show you. Minimum, if we increase it a lot, does that. I don't really know how to explain that, but that's what it does. And maximum, we will adjust as well. So for minimum, around 0.299 works for me. Maximum, let's just decrease a little bit. 0.937 works. So I brought my cursor all the way to the beginning. Let's go back to editor. I'll press P, full screen. And there we go. We have our neon glow Toronto text blinking away. P again to get at a full screen. And now guys, I wanna show you something that I love. I love so much. Um, there's so many amazing things you can do with the follower modifier. So many great text animations. I'm gonna show you sort of a beginner friendly, more basic follower. Um, option for working with text. When I say it's beginner friendly, it still does take some practicing and working with to really get a feel for it. So another way we can, and what we're going to do is pop up words. You've probably seen the effect you're about to learn on TikTok when there's captions on screen and like the main, the word the person's saying pops up as they're saying it. So we're in the edit page. We're going to create, just to show you another way to work in Fusion, we're going to create a Fusion composition, which we can do by with Media Pool open in our Media Pool, right click, choose new Fusion composition. You can name it, I'll call it pop. Pop up text. No, that's not how you spell text. Okay. Create. Here we go. Where did it go? Pop up text. There it is right there in our media. Pool, drag that on to your timeline. Have, bring your cursor over it and let's go back into Fusion. Here we go. We are in Fusion. It looks a little different than it did last time, but same idea. We'll grab text here. You can click on it or drag it down. Connect the text with this little square thingy there, connect that to the media out. Here we go, making sure text is selected over our, in our inspector under text in all capitals. Let's type in pop up words, pop up words. You want a few words on screen because I'm gonna show you how to make each word pop up. Again, I like dosis, so where it says font, Type in doses, press enter. There we go. Good stuff. Increase the size a bit here under the size slider. 0.14-ish works for me. Good stuff. Next thing we're going to do. So here's where 
the follower stuff comes in. If you ever want to create a follower modifier, this is how you do it. In the text window here, right click and do, 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 scroll down and select follower. There we go. It has opened up the option to adjust or to work in modifiers. So to give you a quick gist of what using follower does, the follower modifier lets you animate each letter, character, or each word rather than the word or sentence as a whole. Let's go over to the modifiers tab here and select transform. Good stuff. We are going to click on this drop down menu, this transform drop down menu. Currently, we've chosen characters or by default, that's chosen. Let's click it and choose words. This is how we're gonna be able to have each word animate on its own. Oh, where it says size, click the drop down menu. It's at the bottom here. Okay. Bring your cursor, your playhead. I keep saying cursor, playhead, same thing. Bring it to 20 here. So 20 frames in is where we're going to set our first set of keyframes. And setting a keyframe, if you don't know, basically tells Resolve that we want something, like in this case, our text to be a certain size or in a certain position at the time or frame that we've chosen. So we've chosen 20 frames in here. Size, let's press this keyframe. It's red, so you know you've selected it and it's activated. So the X keyframe and select the Y keyframe. Both are in red, both are now holding the size and position of this text the way it is at frame 20. Now drag your playhead all the way to zero. Where it says size, let's bring X, the X slider down to zero. You can no longer see it. And when we let go of the slider, it created another keyframe to hold that size and position. Also drag the Y slider all the way down to zero. And we have those two keyframes set. I'll show you what we're working with so far. There we go. So, so far, each of the words growing from zero to 20 frames. That's a good start, but we're not done yet. Okay, we're now going to go over to, we're still in modifiers, go over to timing, and we're gonna adjust the delay. So increase it a little bit, around 1.6 works. That just delays the time the animation or size growth occurs between each word. Let's check it out so far. There we go. Cool. Okay. Let's see here. Okay. So you could be done there if you wanted, but we're going to add a little bit of a bounce to the end of this animation. Just going to bring my cursor. Okay. Around there so I can see all the words. Let's open up spline, which you can do by clicking on the top right here. There we go. Here on the left where it says text one, check mark. So we've got everything nice and check marked. And spline's gonna show us in a second where our beginning and end keyframe that we set are, and then we can make some adjustments. But to see them, we need to click here where it says zoom to fit. So click on this. There we go. We have our keyframe that started at zero frames and our second keyframe over here. Select both of these by clicking and dragging over both. Good stuff. And now press S on your keyboard. And that's just made the animation a little bit smoother. We're not done yet. The next thing I wanna do is adjust this point, these points a little bit. I'm gonna click on this bar here and drag up just a bit so we can see a little bit better. So. Right now, because 
our size X and our size Y are almost the same color. I can't tell which one's which and which one I'm grabbing. So we're just gonna adjust one. And then in a sec, I'll show you how to change the color so it's a little more easy to spot which is which. Now, this is the part where you're gonna have to get used to over time and with practice adjusting the curve to add more of a bounce or more movement. We're gonna subtly click on this anchor point is what I call it at least. And we're gonna drag it up just a little bit. So there's a little bit of a curve here. And what is that? Looks like X. Let's change the color. Click on the side word size X. Click on this little color here. Let's select blue, just so it's different than the Y. Okay, easier to see, cool. Now, we're gonna adjust the Y here. Again, it can be even the same as X. That's fine, grab this point, just drag it up. Little bit of a curve, nice. Let's check out how that looks. That should add just a little bit of bounce at the end. There you go, it's subtle, but it, it made, at the end, each word a little bit bigger and then it goes a little bit smaller. That's good and you can make that more intense, more abrupt, whatever you want by adjusting those points. I'm gonna click on here, zoom to fit again. One more thing I wanna show you that is super helpful. I actually learned this from Casey, one of Casey's YouTube videos, so thank you, Casey, is we're going to time stretch what you can do by using this tool here. Make sure that both of your beginning and ends are selected. Oh, we might have to do this after. Hold on a sec, click time stretch first. Okay, here, there I can see these points. Select both of those points. Okay, and with time stretch, this little tool here, selected, these two lines have showed up, shown up. If you were to drag them to the right, you would increase the duration of this entire animation as a whole. So the animation would exist the way that you set it up to. It would just take longer to show. I want it to be faster. Right now, the whole animation takes a little too long in my opinion. So you can select the this white line on the right. Let's drag it in to 10, oh, not that much, to 10 frames. Cool. I'm gonna go back to the edit page with my cursor at the beginning of the Fusion composition. I'll press P on my keyboard for full screen and press the spacebar to check this out. There we go. Awesome. Okay. So there we go, everybody. Those are um, some of my favorite and most used text effects in DaVinci Resolve. I hope you enjoyed. Ali, that was awesome. Oh, I like you. You're so that nice. Was so, that was so great. I, I, you know what? I really like that little bounce effect at the end. I've, I haven't done it quite that way. And I you haven't? Well, I looked at it and was like, no, this isn't going to work. But it looks really nice. And I was right. like, oh, okay. <laughs> Well, I guess I know, that's what I know. <laughs> uh, man, that was wonderful. Um, so so easy to follow along. And uh, I, I saw a lot of people being like, wow, I, I had no idea there was so much cool stuff you could do with text. So that's- There's so cool. much cool stuff, Casey. Oh my God. Yeah. I have so many more things to teach too, but I can't <laughs> into the time slot. But yeah, just amazing things you can do in text. And DaVinci Resolve makes it, when once you know what you're doing, so- easy to do just to like amplify the look of text. It's really, really, I get excited. I get excited about text. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, this is great for the nerds, the, the yeah. <laughs> design nerds and stuff. And uh, yeah, uh, super great. So let's, uh, let's go to some questions. We have a few questions in the chat here. Uh, so here we go. Um, for the convenience of animating text, uh, would adjusting the embedded text size and position be better or worse than adjusting the actual media inspector controls? Okay, so I think what is being asked is um, like nesting it and adjusting the size compared to individually adjusting each asset before. Personally, I don't know that it matters. Do you think 
It does. Uh, I think if you're making text smaller, yeah. uh, it probably doesn't matter. But if you're making it bigger, then it's you're going to lose resolution if you okay. just like scale it up with the transform controls. Yeah. You probably want to do uh, like your make your text size bigger because it's yeah. going to rasterize the text at a bigger size. That makes that's, sense. That's makes my sense. thought. You know what? You're probably you're probably right. I'm going to say you're right. So there we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, Here's one. Is there a site that you'd recommend to get high quality PNG images oh, such as the location pin? Sort of, kind of. I made that one. Um, oh, really? I did. I know I'm fancy. Um, so fancy. Yeah, yeah. I sometimes use Pexels, P E X E L S dot com. Uh, I'm pretty sure you have to you have to always check the licenses options, even yep. with free stuff, because sometimes they allow you to use there are images and videos for commercial use. Sometimes it's only for personal use. Sometimes you can donate money. Sometimes you can, if you just shout them out, that's all good. I'm really paranoid about uh, yeah. not licenses correctly, but pexels.com has some good uh, PNG files as well as, I'm pretty sure Pixabay, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y.com. Yeah. Those would be my to two go-tos for free. Um, and they have some pretty good stuff. So awesome. that's what I'd recommend for a starting point. So, somebody else asked, uh, okay, so you made the pin image, right? So they asked, if it, is it copyright free and can they use it on their videos? You can use it on your videos, yes. Oh, you heard it here <laughs> first, guys. You, you showed up for Resolve Con. You got, you got a free asset just, uh -huh. just out of the gate. How use it all you want. Thanks, yes. Allie. Oh, no problem. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, next one. Uh, is there a title safe option for showing Instagram and TikTok sizes? I actually don't know. Let me uh, look right now. Yes, I believe so. So you, let me just unclick that and turn that off. So, okay. So if you click on the title safe option, let me click the drop down menu, sorry. Social media. Okay, so yes, there is. So you have one by one, four by five, 19 by, or sorry, nine by 16 uh, would be the option I believe I would use. And yeah, you have a few more options, but there you go. And honestly, like I've, my uh, partner makes fun of me for using title safe because uh -huh. he's really good at just off the top of his head, knowing the best composition. I need it. I need to. <laughs> it's okay to use it. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So, sorry, there's a bug like trying to kill me. All right. Oh. I'm fine. <laughs> We're all good. Uh, call me a new, but are there blending modes to use with text in case I want to overlay it on top of a scene? Are there, Casey? I haven't used blending modes. On uh, yeah. I mean, you can you can use the blending mode. It, like, so if you, can you want to show your screen real quick? Yeah. Go back to the Toronto thing. Hold on a sec. If it's available. Okay. You, you notice how I said Toronto. Um, yeah. If you go, if you go to uh, composite in the inspector, you should be able to. There we go. Find that. So in inspector composite composite mode. Yeah. So you can do that just like uh, any any piece of uh, footage. Oh, it's kind of being weird. There might be some kind of background or anything, but generally with text, you can you can go to the controls and um, adjust the composite mode and everything, and kind of overlay it on stuff. There we go. Yeah. Okay. I learned something new. Thank you. That's all right. We we all learn from each other. Yeah, it's I like wonderful. It. Okay, here's a question: Is it important to align text to a certain spot, or is it okay to do it by eye? What do you think? <laughs> I think I'm going to give the wrong answer. I I use Title Safe because my very perfectionist, detail oriented partner husband does, or, or, or is very particular, and as you should be. So mm -hmm. I use Title Safe as a guide. Uh, if you do it by eye, which sometimes I do, uh, you do risk cutting cutting off part of your title. If like, like oftentimes I'll create videos that are 
um, horizontal for someone's website, and then we'll we'll have to recreate them sort of quickly and post for different social like TikTok. So uh, what yeah. else is you know? So I I think it's a it's a better bet to use Title Safe. Do it by eye, but definitely like double check, do some tests. Um, yeah, what do you think, Casey? Um, yeah, I mean, when you're talking about aligning things, uh, I would, it's hard because there aren't like really great alignment tools. Uh, yeah. I, I guess there is in the edit page that there is, Alex was showing some of those, but, um, I would try to get it right on, yeah. um, because it's really easy to get it almost right. And like yeah. your eyes can, can play tricks on you. And I definitely see that a lot with, with students quite a bit. Yeah. Um, one thing I, again, I had to do tests with was, uh, sometimes clients will ask me to put, um, uh, subtitles on screen and they'll, they'll want them and need them pretty high up on the page because if it, if they're on TikTok and they want those subtitles, closed captions to show, yeah. TikTok has a bunch of little icons underneath. So you have to, you have to account for that and you have to know where, the videos are going to be shown what social media spots and um yeah i privately like on a private instagram tiktok account will post a test just to make sure nothing's getting cut off because i i'm paranoid and like to just be triply safe yeah yeah, yeah. that's great yeah. all right so um so I think I think we're going to uh, call that good on the questions. Um, so thank you so much, Ali. This has been this has been so great. Uh, so you you are wonderful. I really appreciate you coming. Great, I catch you, bud. Thank you, and thank you so much to everyone who watched. I hope you learned some valuable stuff, and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of ResolveCon. Yay! All right, thanks, Ali.